I'm using normal model to approximate the binomial. Um, this is a binomial problem. I'm looking for x, the number of successes. I just did the same problem using sampling distribution of PS. The normal approximation to the binomial is another sampling distribution. And the statistic, it's a sampling distribution, is the x. The, it's a bunch of x's, which is the number of successes in each sample. And this is what I'm saying. You can look at your formula sheet under the binomial stuff, and it tells you the mean of the binomial model is NP, the standard deviation is root NPQ. And when you have large enough sample sizes, when you meet the conditions that are the same thing for using P hats, you can actually use the normal model to approximate the binomial. Meaning you can, instead of the normal model being a bunch of P hats, the normal model tells you about a bunch of X's, the number of successes out of N. So we'll, I'm going to show you what that what, what I mean. So 80% of people like cheese. You sample 100, what's the probability that more than 85 like cheese? Well, from the, for, from the, the formula sheet, we know that the mean, if 80% of the people like cheese, I can find the mean, which is sample size 100 times 0.8, I'm expecting about 80 people to like cheese out of my sample of size 100. But I know exactly 80 people won't like cheese. Maybe 82 will like cheese or 78 will like cheese. But I know if I write down the number who like cheese in each sample of size 100, in each n equals 100, most of them will have around 80 people liking cheese. Remember the last model we had was was 0.8, was 80%. There were a bunch of P hats, so it was a calculation of a bunch of percents of people that like cheese. This is talking about the number of people that like cheese, and I'm going to show you the connection to those things in a minute. The standard deviation is square root NPQ. Well, the standard deviation here would be 100 times P, 0.8 times 0.6, which would be 100 times 0.8 times, sorry, 0.2, which is 0.16, which is 0.0, is it 0.2? Yeah, 0.16, which is 0.04, 4% of 1. But so, 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 it is 2. Okay, good. Let me just double check, make sure I got that right. Second square root parentheses 100 times 0.8 times 0.2 equals 4. How did I get 4? 100, oh, duh. 100 times 0.16 is 16, 4. Uh, Four. Good thing I checked with my calculator. I gotta learn this math stuff. So the standard deviation is four. 84. 88. And then I go down four. 76. 72. So in this one, 68% of the time I have between 76 and 84 people who like cheese in my samples of size 100. 95% of the time between 72 and 88 people will like cheese. This model looks an awful lot like the other one where we said 68% of the time between 76 and 84 percent will like cheese. Now we're saying between 76 and 84 people will like cheese. Notice the it's the same thing. I'm going to show you mathematically why in a second why it's the same thing. So you can use either one. You can use a model for the number of successes or you can use a model for the percent of successes in a random sample. So I want to find the probability of getting 85. Well, 85 is right up here. 85. How do I find the area past this? Well, I find a z-score and I use norm CDF. My z is simply 85 minus 80 over the standard deviation of 4, which is 5 over 4, which is 1.25. Well, it's definitely, well, this is a 16, 2 and a half, somewhere between 16 and 2 and a half, I'll say about 10%. If I was going to do norm CDF, I do norm CDF. From this z score, 1.2, 1.25 standard deviations away, up to 999 or 99 or 4,000, up, and I get about 10%. I'm guessing. I don't know exactly what it is, but that's how I do it. I don't have a, I don't have a, a calculator. So why is this the exact same thing as the other? Well. But it's just it's some basic algebra. If you look at it, here we're looking at the number of successes. The other one we're looking at the percent of successes. If you know the number of successes, you notice this is the number of successes for the mean. This is the this standard deviation is also a number of successes. If you have a number of successes and you want to translate into a percent of successes, how do you do that? Well, you just divide by the number. Like if I have 15 successes out of 100, if I know 15 is the number of successes, I divide it by 100 and it turns into 15%, right? Suppose I have four successes out of 10. Well, four successes divided by the number of total attempts, 10, four successes out of 10 is 40%, right? 
One success out of four. One divided is 25%. So you just divide by the total number, n. And watch what happens to these formulas as I divide both of them by n. I take the mean np, so notice we're going to get right back. I'm going to convert this directly to, um, to p hats, to sampling distribution for p hats. Well, I just take the mean. If this is the number of successes, I take the number of successes and I divide by n and I get my p. So you know that the mean for p hats is simply going to be p. Because notice, this was the mean for x, the number of successes, a bunch of x's. x's are the number of successes. Capital X is the number of successes. So that pile over here was a bunch of capital X's, number of success, not x power, sorry, numbers of successes. Well, I also have another number of successes. I need to divide this by n also. So I take the square root. So if I want to do this instead of this, I want to do this, a bunch of p hats. I take this number of successes and divide by n. And do you agree that the square, that n is the same thing as the square root of n squared? You must agree, because if I make the square root of n squared, I get n. So I'm not changing anything here. I'm still pq, which is the same thing as I can just square root the whole thing, npq over n squared. And the n's, this n cancels out with that, and I get pq over n. Square root pq over n. Look at that. Square root pq over n. So, all I, if you take the binomial, if you take this from the from the binomial approximation, which talks about the number of successes and divided by n, the the total number of attempts or tries, right? You get the percent of successes, which is a bunch of p hats. Just like if I took these and I multiplied by n, percent times n gives you the number of successes. I'd be back here. So they're both the same. They're both identical. So if you use a binomial or p hats, you're going to get the same answer. And in this case, it was around somewhere around 10. And I apologize for not having my uh, handy dandy calculator, um, but I don't have it. Sorry.